for this, and we'll get started. Okay, Hello, everybody. Perfect. Welcome to April part three. Uh, this is... How many parts are we going to go up to? <laughs> I, I don't, let's see how today goes. So today, uh, guys, my name is Bill Soroka, founder of NotaryCoach.com and the Sign and Thrive Notary Training Course and Community. I'm honored to have our special guest, April San Miguel from Denton County, Texas, our 2018 yeah. best notary in Denton County. I they, try. <laughs> we are, um, this is a follow-up to uh, our conversation on Sunday. Sunday, um, April shared a lot of her Google My Business uh, strategies, the tools, the resources. We had a great, fun conversation. Uh, that went uh, almost exactly one hour long, but we ran out of time. There's so many questions for ahead of time. Um, and for some reason we ran out of time, April. I don't know how that <laughs> I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't really like to talk, so I'm not sure. I don't know how that happened. I'm gonna, like I'm yanking waiting. teeth just to get you to conversate. So, kind of shy. <laughs> so we wanted to make sure that we got to some of these questions though, because there were a lot of really good ones in there. And April is all about uh, delivering value and really helping other notaries uh, become the best they can be at this. Because April, you're really good at bootstrapping. You're really good on like zero budget, really optimizing and maximizing oh, um, yeah. your online strategies. So I'm going to turn it over to you, if you don't mind. I know you have yeah. a presentation today. So we have a I do. Question. So we're going to just jump right in there and let's start answering some of these questions. Okay, perfect. Just real quickly, I want to tell you guys, I worked a long time on this, okay? I mean, I've got a lot of resources for you guys. I've got a lot of stuff. And for those that just jumped on the call, like my plate was full today. I went all the way downtown Dallas. So I'm a little sweaty and all that. But yeah, I just can't tell. But uh, And I'm so excited to help y'all. Um, and thank you for all the sweet notes. And I'm glad that everybody has gotten something out of this. And if anybody's in Dallas, let me know because I need to build out my network. I'm going to be starting full time on Monday. Uh, so and that's another conversation. All right. So with that said, I created a, um, which I can show you how to do this too. I love this. This is Google um, Sites. Has anybody ever heard of Google Sites? Oh, wait, sorry. I got to share bill, right? You think I'd learn by now. <laughs> Let's see, we're going to share that bad boy. Okay, so this is, I can move this out of the way. This is Google Sites. Um, Google Sites is awesome, guys. You can make your own website, AKA landing page, and guess how much it costs? Zero dollars. And you can do all kinds of stuff with this. Uh, that's another conversation another day. So I kind of put together our questions so that I won't be like squirrel, like I always am, start talking about something and something else comes on. Um, so anyway, uh, let's just get started. So here was um, a question, uh, question number one, how can I get tech help for effective use of my cell, establishing my social media and things like my Google My Business? Um, you know what, that was supposed to go down on the bottom. So that's kind of a little typo there. So we're gonna come back to that. Okay. Is that me? Nope, that's uh, <laughs> Carolyn, I hope you're okay, because that sounded bad. So <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get her muted there. No problem, we got it all taken care of. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll come back to that. But but I do want to talk about this right here. So this was supposed to be something else. Um, so everyone always asks, what social platforms are the best? Where should I concentrate my efforts? So you got to kind of think about it. What are you what are you using your social media for? So for me, I've already established my business per se. Like I'm getting the calls. Like today was a prime example you know, I've decided to maybe take my notary business one more step forward. Like I want to create logos for other notaries, you know, to help them train this and that. So my idea of social media might be a little bit different than yours. So you kind of have to uh, think along those lines. And the reason why I say that is, so like if you're posting on Instagram, customers more than likely that are trying to find a notary aren't necessarily going to Instagram. A lot of other notaries are on there and you share resources within Instagram, but maybe more customers are going to things like, and, and this is just my opinion too. And Bill step in with this if you want. I remember last year saying that I was going to start getting into Facebook more. I have found for me personally with my business, it's Google. All the other, you know, the social media and all that other kind of stuff, it's more like establishing you and your network and getting more backlinks and things like that. Bill, would you say that's true? And again, this is just on my experience. 
Well, I think it really depends on how you optimize it. We are experiencing a lot of success in social media if, uh, if it's used correctly. And when I say correctly, what I mean is um, we see a lot of, it's a lot, it's very easy to give examples of how to do it wrong. And that is broadcasting uh, your, just advertising, selling stuff on every single post. That does not go over very well. But if you share your journey, share your passion, and you're delivering value, then yes, that changes everything. That establishes your authority and your expertise in the field. Yes, exactly. And that's kind of like what that is. So kind of think about them like this, like Pinterest and Google are more for searching. People are going there to find ideas or they're going to search for stuff. Whereas Facebook and Instagram, people are sharing just their lives or their, their, people aren't necessarily going there to buy per se. But you know what, tomorrow, it it could all change tomorrow because it's always like ebb and flow. So what I say, now don't do like April San Miguel does because I try to dabble myself in everything and I do a horrible job. If I, if I could just focus on one thing, I'd have a really great thing. Oh, well, I will. Oh, go ahead, Bill. No, I was just going to speak to that specifically because a, a lot of people have anxiety around social media and how they're supposed to represent themselves and uh, and when there's so many options and really of the popular ones, there might only be five or six or seven of them, but there are literally hundreds, maybe even thousands that oh. are used other places that it just puts so much pressure on us. So stick with what you know first, just start yeah. there. If you're on Facebook, start with Facebook. If you're on Insta, start with Insta, Twitter, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with and you know you're going to use, start there. Yeah, exactly. Because you, you want to be really good at one thing, not kind of mediocre at a lot of things. And I think as, as, as us at establishing our business, if I had to pick two, me personally, I would say it's LinkedIn because that's really getting a lot of play. Um, and obviously, um, Google My Business, I guess I'm saying social media. What would, you, what would you pick for your second one, Bill? Business. You want to get more notary customers. Facebook is, Facebook has been amazing for me. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Okay. Perfect. Um, So that was what that was. There was one other thing, but, but yeah. So think along the lines when you're posting and things like that, people aren't necessarily going to Facebook going, how do I do a note? Well, as I'm saying that they kind of do, it's, it's changed. It's just changed. I mean, every day it changes. What's interesting is on Facebook, because I shared so much of my journey, my passion about it is people do get on Facebook and say, does anyone know a notary? And then I get tagged by like 16 different people in these posts that bills a notary, bills a notary. So in that way, it has been amazing. And when other loan officers and real estate agents see that, it has led to some amazing relationships. So that's why I am a fan of Facebook and sharing the journey without selling. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I get you with selling. Cause when I first started all of it, I was like, didn't know to go. We're open 24 hours. Yep. We're open 20. <laughs> Cause I didn't really know what to post, you know? And, and okay. Yeah, we get it April. Um, but also too, you want to think that, okay, you've posted this once or twice. Okay. Everybody's seen it. Well, no, they haven't. I'm sure if you watch the video that Bill and I did a year ago, you'll be like, Oh, I forgot about this and that. Um, and it's just always ever changing. So someone had asked what was the best place, um, uh, where to post and what have you. <clears throat> okay. So question number two, what is the best way to keep all those business cards organized, but in a meaningful way to remember who they are? Um, I am personally a big proponent of CRM systems. It's customer retention management system. There are five gazillion bazillion out there. My personal favorite, it's called HubSpot. And I can send a link out later. Um, It's great because it will record your email. I mean, there's a lot of platforms out there. I personally would recommend a CRM system. It is a um, cloud-based system. And for the most part, most of them are free. Or some of them might have just a small fee for services. And Bill might be able to talk to this one a little bit better than I can um, as far as CRM and how to manage, you know, all of your contacts and what have you. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of CRMs. I've been talking about HubSpot for a couple oh, of years as well. <laughs> because HubSpot's free and it just keeps getting better and better and mm-hmm. better and it integrates very well with Gmail. So you can automate. So what? What's amazing about these is if you, if you have the self-discipline to input the data, 
uh, from business cards or from client appointments or whatever. Well, you it can is. scan them now with your with your phone on HubSpot. Yeah, that's super way easy, easy <clears throat> to get it in there. And then the next step is to follow up and stay in touch. This whole concept of staying in touch so you are top of mind, delivering value throughout the year so you can be the go-to notary. And uh, it's funny that we're talking about this because I'm, I'm going to the notary symposium on Saturday, but I'm going to be speaking to this, this concept right here. And it's really understanding the lifetime value of your customer. It's real easy for us because all, almost every notary before us is transactional based where, you know, we get $15 or we get a hundred dollars or whatever it is. And then poof, we're gone. And then we're scrambling to get the next customer. Yeah. Every customer who needs a notary now is going to need a notary later. And if you already have them as a customer, maintain that relationship and that lifetime value of a customer could end up being thousands of dollars, not only from the notary transactions, but you don't know what they do for a living. They might be the escrow manager. They might be a bank manager. They might just be somebody who needs other services. And most of us have other side hustles too. So these relationships, yeah are very, very valuable. And when you honor them with a CRM tool and stay in touch with people, it's, it's pretty powerful. Well, and, and something I'll add to this. So, okay. So think about it like this. So you're like, well, I don't want to buy an app or I don't want to do this. I don't want to do as far as when it comes like pro and free and all that. Okay. If you're not paying for marketing, you're not paying for advertising. What's $5. What's $10 a month. If it can net you thousands upon thousands of dollars. And I think people don't realize the value of that. Like for bill and his course and coaching, you know, however much it is, if, let's just say it's $5,000 on his coaching. If it's going to make you $30,000, then it is well worth it. So some of these apps like people like Canva, I mean, can't it, there is such a huge difference between the free and the pro and it's only $12 a month. You know, it's worth it because it saves time for you. You're not spending money in those avenues. So I'm a big proponent of try it. If you like it, then great. Um, you know, buy the pro version. I mean, I'm not, that's how I kind of feel, but, um, and, and one other thing I do personally, like whenever I get people's phone numbers or I'm putting them in my phone is I always put their name in like bill and I'll put dash notary coach if you're not even using a CRM. And then you can put in your notes, you know, I met at McDonald's and we talked about X, Y, Z. And so that way, you know, you have your information in there. But where HubSpot is, is it really deep dives it. Like when I joined two or three years ago, um, I got in for like $10 a month. So it tracks my emails so I can see when people open them, how many times they open it, if they click and stuff like that. So um, anyway, here we go with that. Um, okay. So question number three, where should I list my business? Do I need a website? Um, we kind of discussed that a lot um, on Sunday, Bill. Um, but one thing that I found, and I had said it, I meant to put that in here. Um, it gave a really good uh, synopsis on um, citations. That's what I was thinking of, Bill. And oh, let me see, I think I might have put it down here. Hang on. Crud. I did not. I made a graphic. I'm just going to show y'all. We're going to go right here and show you. Um, I'm going to go to Dallas. Um, yeah. So um, where should I put my website? So just to kind of review real quick, this, there's three different ways to put your website. So you can go on Google search, which went, this is Google search right here. So that's your Google, my business website. And then you have Google maps, which does your uh, location. And then you have your website website down here. So this is, so this is local. This is a domain website. Uh, local and maps, if that makes sense. Do you need to have both? Eventually you can, but you can have both in the sense that you don't pay for like a WordPress website. You can have a website that's Thumbtack. You can have a website that's um, Yelp. Um, you can have like what I'm doing right here, a Google Sites and you link it up to this and this was free um, as far as a web website goes. Beautiful. On that one. And then um, I'm, I'm thinking too, um, the directories are pretty powerful too. We have those three main directories that people use. What, what luck have you had with uh, like one, two, three, notary, notary cafe and notary review? Yes. Notary, rotary. 
Yes, and that's what I meant to tell you on that as well. So for me, as a general mobile notary, I don't necessarily concentrate on those. Not not because I don't want to, but for me personally, they're, I think they're gear, geared more towards signing agents, but I could be wrong with that. Um, but yes, you absolutely, that's the other thing you want to do is you want to list your business and list your services on every notary platform you can out there. Um, I haven't used those, but Bill, if you have anything you'd like to say about those. Yeah, um, well, I would, I would, and this might be even good for you, April, because yeah, what, no, I, what's nice about those three, uh, one, two, three, notary, notary cafe, and notary rotary, is that they have uh, search engine optimization and they have been around forever. So when people search for notary near me, very often their uh, one, two, three, notary profile comes up because mm -hmm. they have search engine optimization. So if you are, even if you're just doing general notary work, those three directories might be a really good option for you. No, you know what? That's a really good point because that's another citation. That's like a Facebook citation or a Yelp citation. It's just one more little coin in your purse, you know, uh, to buy your place. Yeah, I, I'll think of it like that. That's one more dollar to buy your place on Google, right? Yeah, <laughs> Um, and then, okay, so one thing I wanted to talk about reviews, because we had a lot more questions about reviews again, and what's the best way to have clients leave reviews? Where should I be set up to have that happen? And how can I post reviews on other sites? Um, one thing that I didn't discuss when we were um, on, the call, on the call on Sunday is um, uh, it's called Small Thanks by Google. And um, once you have reviews with Google, you are able to make marketing materials for free from Google. And I can show you here real quickly how that works. Um, and this is a great, free, powerful tool. I believe they're, they're starting to call it Google Marketing now, but I'm going to go with Google Small Things. And with this, if the website that you are wanting to have your Google reviews on or wherever that platform is, if they don't have a place to where you can put the testimonials or you can't do it like an HTML link in there, this is what's gonna really help you here. So what you'll do is you'll go over here and you type in your business name. Denton Notary. Okay, Denton Notary to go. And it's going to be pulling up. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see are posters. So you can actually order these posters and they can be delivered to you. So we are all um, mobile. So these you may not necessarily want these, but you could also put it on your car if you'd like to. So you can have a mail to you or download, but this is gold right here, people. I love this. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, see, this is awesome. I love this. They've had this for about a year now and I've, I've used this quite a bit and they've um, really fancied it up over, um, this past year. Um, but what it does is you can have social, social media posts from here, uh, print ready graphics. I'm starting to notice some of the businesses in town are posting these in their door. So as you walk around town, you'll see some folks that have these. Uh, for me, I like the social media post ones because I'll put those within my Google My Business. And if someone clicks on that, it actually takes them to my reviews so they can see my reviews. I don't even have to hyperlink it. It's already linked. Um, and then you have like table tents, um, but now here's what's cool is you can go right here and you can say, choose other styles and reviews. So what it will do is it will pull out like all of your, um, all of your reviews and you can pick which ones you want to have on those posters and those prints. Um, and you can kind of just, you know, kind of, oops, wait, let's go back some, pick which one you want. One thing that they used to have, oh, one thing that they used to have is where you could have two or three quotes on one graphic. Um, but uh, yeah, so you just kind of pick whichever one you want to put on there. But they used to have where you could pick like three of these and put it on that graphic, but you just pick one. So we'll just do like great service, great price. And then we'll hit next. And this is what's cool because they have seasonal ones. So you can kind of change it up. So they have like art styles here. <clears throat> We can kind of thumb through some of those. And then you can change the colors of them as well, too. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. I did not know about that. that is awesome. You didn't? Oh, yeah. And see right here. So these are your print-ready posters, and these are your social media posts. And then they have this style where it's just your uh, generic, <clears throat> generic Google style. And then the sign script. I'm sure you've seen these. I've seen these all over the place. Um, and you got that. And then you have your chalkboard right here right there. Boom. You know what's so funny about that is I just saw, I, I've been using the same oil change place for seven years and I just saw my review on this template 
at their location. I was like, hey, that's me. Yeah, and you're like, hey, now, that's now, 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 now you know how they did it. And then you'll just click right here, finish. And this is like a little nugget. I'm, I'm finding out people don't really know about this. Yeah. Um, and I actually got my hair um, uh, highlighted today. Do you guys like it? <laughs> and my hairstylist, she had no clue about Google My Business. No, nope. what do y'all think I started doing? <laughs> Telling her all about it. Um, I don't know why I got to that subject. Okay, so once you do that, then you can, it gives you a zip file. And so you just hit download kit and it will be emailed to you and you have all kinds of graphics and stuff with that. But here's what you can do. So again, that'll be emailed to you, but you can go down here, yeah. And you can change the things up if you want to. Um, here in just a second, it's going to give me little icons right here. And I can instantly share, I think it's to my Twitter, my Facebook, and my Gmail. Oh, it's saying unable to do it. My, my computer's been really slow lately. I think our internet's messing up. And then it also makes a little video for you that you can post directly to Facebook, Twitter, or that. I'll let y'all watch it real quick. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Isn't that cool? Hey, April, uh, Ronnie has oh, a no, great sorry. question kind of about this. Yeah. She says, do you advertise as we, even if it's just you? What's your, what's I your do. Point? Well, I, yes. And I, sometimes I'm like, I, I it's mainly me, we, when I'm making my social media posts, but if you go all over my reviews, I'm always like, thank you so much. I love what I do. So it's, it is we, and it is I, but everybody, um, yeah, it's both. How do you do it, Bill? I definitely do we, and I always have, because I think we is suggestive of even a collaboration or a team or just a different mentality approaching business too. Um, there's something psychological about it too so when people hear i i i uh, they tend to it, it shifts the way that you look at them or the, your perspective of them so i i suggest we and mm -hmm. especially like april's talking about um she's looking for collaborators in the dallas area you know people that when she's not available she can refer out to so she's a we even though we're solopreneurs it takes a village to make this business work, you know, so oh. we're always out there collaborating. So I, I recommend using we. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that a lot too. That's awesome. Um, yeah. So it makes the video and then your marketing kit and you can review your um, profile and all that on Google, my business. How many people knew about this bad boy? Do we have anyone that any questions on this? Do we have any questions? Yeah, we've got one from Sylvie. Sylvie says, okay. to get reviews on Google My Business, the customer must have a Google login. Is that correct? I believe so, but I can't answer to that. I'm not for sure. I, I don't know. Okay. That would be worth looking into. Yeah, um, it account. almost seems like everybody has a Google. I know. Like when that, I was like, I don't know. Who doesn't have a Google? You know, but, um, oh, I will. Okay. Yes, I think they do because with Yelp, I have like 15 reviews on there, but they're not being shown because they're algorithms or something like that. And someone told me they went and looked at my reviews. And for the most part, most of the people reviewed, it was like their first time to review. Um, and so Yelp sees that as a bad thing. And I'm like, you should see that as a good thing because they thought my service was that good that they signed, they signed up for an account so they could say that they liked the service that I gave, you know? Yep. So it's a, it's a catch twenty two. So I, I'm going to go with. I think they have to have an account, but I can't. I could be they wrong. Do. On that. Makes sense. Yep. They do. Um, they do. We got confirmation. Perfect. iPhone said yes. Mm -hmm. Any other? It questions? has to be. Um. I. It has to be Google. And, um. What's the other one? YouTube. Or something related to Google. A Google product. Okay. Something owned yes. by Google. Yep. Okay. It has oh, to be a Google product. That makes sense. Um, and then again, so, so now you have these graphics that you can use for your reviews and where to put them if, if you can't link it. Um, and I showed you how you can make your marketing kit. And then this is something else I do too, is like I'll screenshot my review and then put it in Canva and make a little, you know, do my hickey out of it. A Duma hickey. A on. Duma hickey. Hold on one second. Sylvie says, and this, I want to, I want to definitely give you a chance to respond and I'd like to respond as well. So Sylvie says, sure. how do you get reviews if they're not signed in, if they are not signed in on Google? Tell them they need to get a Google, a Google account. <laughs> I mean, just ask for it. I mean, they got to do it. 
They definitely have to do it. You have to do it for sure. If you're a business owner, you've got to have, you're just going oh, yeah. to have a Google account because they need to be able to do this. If you have customers though, like, I mean, sometimes, you know, we're, we're working with people um, that are seniors. They don't, mm -hmm. they don't even own a computer. They don't have any of that. And there's other options for this too. So um, you can have them write out a review and it's not going to go into Google reviews like this, but you can use that as a testimonial on your website. So you can hand type it onto your website. There you, you go. Not as powerful as Google reviews because Google reviews has the algorithm. It's the, what people are going to see. All that stuff is all intertwined and stuff. It can be confirmation when they get to your page. Oh, look, here's some more testimonials and things like that. So there's always, always, always a way uh, to I'm just ask, you know, <laughs> y'all will get a kick out of this. So yesterday I had a notary and it was actually here in our neighborhood um, and it was for, um, oh, it was um, her power of attorney or something like that. And she needed witnesses and they were like, oh, I didn't know we need witnesses. I'm like, hang on, if y'all are okay with this, I'm going to just walk out the door and go, to, <laughs> go down the street. Literally, I, can't, I saw a neighbor get in the mail. <laughs> so I had a witness like in a minute. <laughs> So you just ask for it and you go for it and you just do it. Um, okay. April's getting tired. It has been a long couple of days. I just, um, uh, okay. So is there a way to have a text message sent automatically when I cannot answer the phone? So I kind of took a little screenshot here of Google keep. That's one of my other Google products that I love. Um, and that's where I have my canned messages. So like for instance, the other day when we were on, um, on the call here, um, I had customers calling, but I couldn't answer the phone. So what I did is I, I have my pre-made text in my Google Keep. And so I'll just copy and paste that into my phone. So I make it very generic-ish that I can do that on the fly. It doesn't have to have any fluff in that. Yeah, that's, um, this, this is a great question. I love that this was even asked and that people are thinking about this because like we talked about, um, you had a client where she called 10 notaries and nobody answered the phone. We get that via text message as well. So creating an automated system, there are some systems out there, even on your phone. Sorry, we got some background noise here. That's you. Sorry. That's you, April. Oh, sorry. Um, I had some technical difficulty there. It was like going in and out. <clears throat> there was... Um, there are some systems, even on your phone, you know, whenever you get an incoming call, you can swipe up and it says, send a message. You can customize those messages as well. And then also I'm working with a company out of Washington that is going to have automated systems for this. That's tailored just to notaries. So awesome. you can, they'll, you'll send a text. They'll, it'll automate some questions. So if you're in a signing, you don't have to lose revenue and you don't have to sacrifice customer service by taking calls or being interrupted. So it's, there is technology. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, if they need beta testers, count me in. Yeah, you know <laughs> I, I will. You know I will. I'm the queen of apps. I love them. I love them. I love them. Before we move um, on, there okay. is a, there's a question I'd like to propose to you here. Uh, Joanna sure. says, what if you arrive at a location of a client and for different reasons, you can't notarize the document and it's actually their fault. Do you still charge them? And how do you make it known that they need to pay for your travel and time? Okay. So this kind of came up, not yesterday, but the day before. Um, she, I could tell she was kind of like barking at my fees and all of that. And, and I kind of explained to her, you know, you're getting a lot of value out of me. You know, it took a lot for you to find me and me to get here today. I'm invested in my business. I know what I'm doing. I, you know, I have, I'm trained. I, um, you know, I carry it. Well, and you had mentioned insurance and what have you. Um, just that, you know, I'm a service just like if you needed a plumber, you know, yeah, you can go to the bank or yeah, you can go there, but I'm coming here to you and I'm providing that convenience to you. And if I, if I didn't charge for my services, I wouldn't be able to do it for everyone. I had a really good response to that the other day and I can't think of it right now. Um, but what, and here's the one thing that I always hate, like when, okay, we're at the end, it's time for payment. I never, it's always like, you know, I don't know if y'all remember when you used to babysit, you know, and they give you the money at the end of the night and you just stick it in your pocket and you, you don't want to look at how much you made or whatever. Um, so when I'm wrapping up my, my way of asking that and doing that is, so how, how would you like to pay today and then that gets it out of there so so with that said if if it's their fault and all that say i'm sorry but what uh, i don't know <laughs> i don't know how to answer that one bill 
It, well, it's, it's uncomfortable when it does happen. And I think there's a couple of different approaches to it. Number one, the first approach is to pre-qualify ahead of time and yeah. have a conversation. So one that I, I like to ask probing questions up front. Why? Because there have been so many times where I didn't ask questions on the front end because I was shy, embarrassed. I didn't oh, know what yes. I was doing. So I didn't ask the right questions. So I get there and I'm like, I can't even do this. Doc. This isn't a notarized document. This is like, oh, you wanted me to bring, you wanted me to be a lawyer. So, and, yeah. so had I done the qualification questions ahead of time, we could have avoided that. And so I like to just spell it out for people. Okay, just for showing up, da, 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 you know, all, all of the fees. So it's, it's really mapped out and we have an agreement. It's pretty clear that I'm going to be able to help them. I can ask them if they need witnesses, you know, all mm -hmm. of that up ahead of the time. Still. The way that communication and consumers work, there are going to be op these times when um, they it just you know they said one thing but it's different uh, because they don't understand the process or whatever it might be. I yeah, I think it's going to be an judgment call. You know, do you it, it, I, how much was it out for you to do? You know, <laughs> I think it's I think it's very situational. So in the thing, mm -hmm. we we meet people on the best days and we meet people on the worst days. So we don't. For me personally, if I'm in, I'm in a hospital and it's the family's mom and she's deteriorating and we've, we've hit a hang up, I don't feel like charging them. You know, that's just my personal decision. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. But here's what's interesting. When you keep your attitude good and you show up on time and you are communicative and you are a professional, families recognize that for the most part. They want they to do. compensate you. I have never... I've, there have been times when I've said, no, I'm not going to take payment for this, but families usually want to push it on. They're like, please take our money. I know you showed up, I you do. got here, you mm -hmm. bought rush hour. You know, they're, I mean, they're literally stuffing hundred dollar bills in my pocket at some times. Hey, now how are you getting hundred dollar bills? What's your little secret there, Bill? Cause I don't have that. <laughs> got the Benjamins. <laughs> got to do it. Yeah. But, um, it's, I think it's very situational. There are ways to handle it professionally. Uh, and then there's ways not to, but communication is key. Yeah. And it's hard. You know, it's really, I, I, I face that and I, sometimes I give away my services way too much. And this lady, I think yesterday or the day before, she's like, don't do that to yourself, April. She said, sometimes women think that they have to cheat or not. I don't know how she said it, but just that stand your ground, you know, and it's hard to do. It's very hard for me to do that, you know, but we educate, we, yes, <laughs> that's just a tricky one. And, and, and if they can't pay, uh, Okay. I'm glad you helped me with that one. <laughs> I don't like uncomfortable situations like that. <laughs> yeah, very uncomfortable. Well, and, and you know what, here's something that can help you with that right there. So this is what I do with my customers. I, I, on this graphic, I accidentally covered up my car, but once I've confirmed with my customers, you know, they ask me how much and all that kind of stuff. And I confirm wherever I'm meeting them, what I'll do is I'll send them this. So this is my fees on here, uh, a picture of me. So they know what I look like and my car. And then, you know, my logo, this is my logo at the time. I think I need to redo that. I have... <laughs> I change things all the time. <laughs> Can you tell, Bill? I have no uh, idea. Yeah, no, not at all. And I'm all <laughs> over the place. But no, um, I have gotten many, not compliments, but a thank you on this because they're like, April, this was perfect. Because what's happening is when they're calling notaries, they're going down that list. And if they talk to you, they may not remember who it was that you talked to. So if you send this to them, then they'll have, and then it's clear, it's cut and dry. Your fee is right there, you know? Um, and your low in your name and your car and all that kind of stuff that, so that kind of would cut out that situation too. And you can make it, you know, you can make this as detailed as you want to. Mine's very basic. Um, and I, of course I, um, blurred my, uh, fees on there. Any take on that bill? And, and but now this is for general. I don't know about signing agents. No, no, right? this is, the, and this is what we're talking about for sure is general notary work. So this is, um, Really great. And that might be one of the steps that eliminates that awkward conversation, right? If, yeah. you, have, if you have a some sort of verbiage on there that says um, something about your cancellation fee or if uh, uh, it's a, it's almost a, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of the word, but they're um, a non-performance clause. Like if you don't yeah. follow instructions that you were given on the phone, then this, I still have to charge my fee. And there's always a way to pr professionalize things uh, and yeah. compassion as well. Love yeah, and let's, let's move on to question six. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So like 
te oh, how can I get um, tech help for effective use of my cell phone in establishing social media? Well, you hustle it like April San Miguel does. And one thing I'm going to talk to, I have, a, um, I have a spreadsheet that I've worked on, and it is all of my resources. It is everything that I have, and it's, <laughs> it's a lot of links, but I have it all like websites, SEO. These are things that can kind of help you, but it's hustling people. If you want to get this, not, not hustling. How should I say that? I spend a lot of time researching, a lot of time watching YouTube videos, a lot of time just looking and seeing what other notaries do and following. I look and see what people do and how I can do it better per se. And I've just like all the things that I've, well, w listen to these calls too. Like listen to Bill, listen to me. We give, uh, and, and everyone, all your peers, everyone has we all have our little tips and tricks. Like some people are like, oh, that's a great idea to do this or the Google reviews. It's all about being resourceful. That's it. That's the, the key to everything is being the MacGyver notary. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a, there's a bit of a misconception too that um, we just step into this business and we know everything. I didn't know anything. Yeah, yeah you got to know anything. I didn't nothing. know anything. I didn't even know the National Notary Association existed when I got into this business. I thought I had just this, like this, my friend just invented this job for me. So I was just <laughs> plowing away, just working it. But that when you really get down to it to do anything in any business, there are certain skills that you're going to need and we're not born with them. We have right. to learn them. Sometimes we don't even know what we don't know. So you mm -hmm. got to dig in a little bit and then start researching and know your resources. Now this one specifically says tech help. And I know tech help is hard to come by mm -hmm. uh, because I don't, you know, I'd rather throw a printer out of the window than have to reprogram it or load software, all that stuff. So yeah, some resources, you know, for computers, um, you know, you got Geek Squad. There's all kinds of companies that will do it, but also your cell phone provider very oftentimes has some resources for how to use your phone. If it's an Android phone or the Apple Store, they have some basic little classes that you can take that will teach you how to use that stuff. And uh, sometimes just in your um, Facebook forums and things like that. that and I was going to say that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, people that know they're really good at this. It's second nature, you know, they, and they, they like doing that. Yeah, because yeah. I want someone to help me because every time I do this to make my little screenshot. Oh, now it's not disappear. Yes, it disappears. If someone can help me with that, I will pay you a million dollars. You know how you hover over something and it disappears. It's driving me crazy and I can't figure it out. I'm always Googling everything. Um, there was something that I was going to say about that too. Um, it it kind of drives me crazy, but it is what it is. Um, like when I go on Pinterest to try it, to try and find things and I, you know, I click on something and everything's popping up by my class, do this, do that. I'm telling you guys, these classes, like I took a blogging class and it was, I say only, but it was $97. I learned so much from that class and that $97 that I spent is well worth it because I learned a lot of stuff from that. And if all I spent was $97 and I'm going to make a thousand or thousands of dollars from it, it is so worth it. So you can, it's a, it, it's kind of I don't know how to say it. Bill, help me out here. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just a it's a return on investment. So yeah. investing in yourself through education is the best investment that you can make because it whatever you learn is going to translate to any other business that you take on. But I also since you brought that up, there's a um, online course called Udemy. U D. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. Why? And uh, they have thousands of different courses on every topic that you can imagine. There's always running promos and specials on it. You can get amazing classes for like nine bucks that will teach you just about anything. Not, uh, not necessarily teachable, but you to me. Oh, did I? Oh, I did the wrong one. I'm sorry. Um, you to me. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's millions. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. And like LinkedIn learning. Oh, and did you know, okay. I love LinkedIn learning. Um, they gave me like a free trial. Did you know your local libraries, you can get a, well, at least here in Denton, you can get a LinkedIn, um, uh, what is it? The professional or whatever for $25 a year where they charge like, I don't even know, $70 a month or something like that. So check wow. out your local library. And mm -hmm. I like LinkedIn learning because they're really professional. Like they really show you how to, th their courses are good. And not to say that they're not good on Udemy as well. 
Yep. Great. And then um, Sherry says Skillshare is good. Okay. April, mm-hmm. we, we yep. have some, we have some questions. Uh, that okay, good. Live, so I'm going to take these. Uh, Jen Neitzel, your hand is up. You have a question for her, April? Oh, wait, can you hear me? Yep. Sure can. Hi. Okay. Hey, hey guys, April. Amazing. What's talk. up? Um, uh, I'm going to, um, full disclosure. I know April. She's a friend of mine. Yeah. We've met a couple of times and talked all things notary. We've had a great um, relationship. Yes, ma'am. So I, I went to a, oh, there you go. See me now. I went to um, a notary uh, or a marketing class today. Oh, and, um, I learned a ton of stuff. Oh, good. Why tonight, don't you tell me about it? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. I'm getting ready oh, okay. to. So, but tonight, April, the whole um, the Google marketing kit thing. I had no idea. Uh huh. Freaking brilliant. I mean, that's amazing. I'm so excited about that. I'm going to be all over that tomorrow morning. Yes. Um, isn't that awesome? I want to go back to your first thing you talked about, which was social media mm-hmm. and, and all the different platforms that we have to choose from. And, um, as you guys both know, you and Bill both know it can be a time sucker. Oh yeah. Big time mm-hmm. sucker. Here's what I learned at this marketing thing today. Now I haven't tested this out. Um, but I have talked to some people that I know and trust and they swear by this hoot suite. Oh yeah. I love it. Cause that automation. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I never heard of this. So hoot suite, H O O T suite, S U I T E. And it allows you to automate your uh, posts across all social media platforms. So instead of posting something on Instagram, posting something on Facebook, posting something on LinkedIn, posting and, you know, taking that, you know, okay, 10 minutes, but still 10 minutes is 10 minutes, whatever. You can put it on Hootsuite and it blasts it out to everybody. So that should be something that you incorporate into this, this teaching that you're doing. Oh yeah. Uh, Yeah, totally. Awesome job. I love it. Yeah. And I use like Tailwind. That's one for Pinterest and Instagram. And I just put on here, oh my God, this hashtagger thing. Oh, and I got, I want to tell y'all real quickly about hashtags. People are like, should I really use hashtags? Do people go to Google and say hashtag? (laughs) So here's the deal with hashtag. Hashtag is like putting a label on your bracelet. It's, you know, you're doing, I just bought this beautiful new silver bracelet at Macy's today. Okay, fine, great. But if you do a hashtag bracelet Macy's, it's going to get found more because you're, yeah. you're putting that label on it. But this mm-hmm. one, um, I can't remember the name of it, but it tests, split test them. And yeah, there, there's a ton. Hootsuite is good. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can use with that. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to be uh, diving into that tomorrow as well as your Google marketing kit. Thank you for all the tips. Mm-hmm. And, I thought so. I love Miss Google. <laughs> <laughs> you are Miss Google. Every time I get with April, she teaches me new stuff. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. And awesome. you know what? Um, sometimes Google has, um, I can't remember what they call it and they haven't had it in a while, but like every three months or so, like the local chapter, like their uh, Google um, associate, like their Google affiliates or something like that. They have learning with Google and you can go like here in Denton, it's called Stoke Coworking and isn't it Stoke? Yeah, Stoke. And they um, host the Google uh, call and you get like sw- uh, swag and stuff like that there. Awesome. That's really good to know too. Uh, yeah. Next question is from Roslyn. Roslyn, your hand's up. Are you able to unmute and share? Oh, there we go. Roslyn, going once. If you're trying to talk, you are muted. And now you're gone. Okay. I just saw somebody that said, April, you said you'll be starting a full-time job. Have you given any thought to how you're going to juggle this with your noted risk? Um, I can do it. I can do it all. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I like being busy. If I'm not busy, I'm not good. It's, you know how I'm going to do it? I'm going to um, have my network of notaries. Yeah. That's, and that's a really good balance too. And mm-hmm. a lot of these, uh, especially with general notary work are- it's at night weekends. I can still do it. They're evening and weekends. Like we talked about on Sunday, Sundays are a busy day for general notary work. Mm-hmm. Gina asks, April, are you part of a meetup group or do you have a meetup or group in Denton that I can join? No, that she Let's didn't. make one, girl. <laughs> so it sounds like Gina's local. So yeah, and I think there's a lot of power in these local meetup groups too. Oh yeah. When you tie in training and effective networking. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of, there's lots of wrong ways to do meetups too. So uh, be uh, intentional when you mm-hmm. set up your meetup and know what your purpose is. I love it. Exactly. And then there's another question that Bill asked in here about taking credit cards. 
Um, April, do you accept credit cards? And if you do, do you charge the credit card in advance of your appointment or afterwards? So when they call, I say I prefer cash. However, I can take Zelle. Don't tell my bank I'm taking it because it's supposed to be for personal. <laughs> or I can take Venmo. Don't tell Venmo. <laughs> uh, so I try, I try those three. And if they can't do it, then I have a Square account set up. And I have my little Dumahickey and my Dumahickey. <laughs> Uh, my little reader thing that I attach here, or I can take it manually, or I take checks too. I don't mind taking checks, um, but I just tell them I prefer not to take credit cards. Nine times out of 10, they're going to get me the cash because that's sweet. Tell them to get that cash beforehand. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about that is I never, um, I never even bring up the credit card and I've never had anybody not pay me cash. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, me personally, I prefer cash and I, I want, I want to show y'all something real quick. I got to get it real quick. Ugh. Yeah, this is my, um, uh, this is my little notary. I love this thing. This is my, uh, notary thing I have here, but I have my, um, oh, and I took my stamper. So I have my two stamps here, my ink, I have my little square thing here, and I have my blue pens and my black pens. I have my feet. Oh, and what I'll do if I can see, if I can tell if someone's kind of haggling the price. Oh, dang it, I took it out. Um, I forgot to take out my money for this. Um, and then I always put my cash right here, but I'll kind of like put my little fee thing out and I'll kind of like lay it right there so people can see it. But um, I carry this with me so I can have all my notary supplies and um, my business cards and stuff. But I love it and it just zips up. Excellent. Sylvie says, Boom. you charge an additional fee for uh, people who pay with a credit card. Well, I kind of try to like, well, it does cost me a little extra fee. If you had cash, <laughs> I kind of say it like that. And they're like, I'm sorry, all I have is a credit card. So I just eat it. You know, it's a buck or two. Yeah. It's a cost of doing business. Exactly. And you have to be really careful with charging extra additional for people. You can't who do that. You can get in trouble. Fact, yeah. It's a, if it's not against the law, it's definitely against the policies. For exactly. Does. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's like I said, it's the cost of doing business and you can write it off and maybe they wouldn't have called you if they couldn't pay with the credit card. Yeah. You won't get paid. I'll take it. If it's two bucks that I lose, then I'll take it. <laughs> Jerry says, April, that's a nice bag. Where'd you get it from? I got it from Target. They sold out of, oh, they were on clearance and I bought every single one of them. So I have 20 of them here. So if it feel be, like being nice, we'll see what we can do with them. <laughs> and how about your big blue bag behind? Oh, this, oh, I love this. This is my Spartina bag. I used to be a wholesale sales rep and this is the bag I had from there. Oh, I will show you what I absolutely, do I not have, dang it, I, it's down, oh no. Whew. Oh, and one other thing, hold on, let me take my customer's paperwork off of here, that I do too, let me just take all of this off, hang on, um, is I always have a clipboard with me, okay, because I'm going to hospitals, I'm meeting people out in parking lots, it's windy, or what have you, so I have this in the middle of my, and I, and I just got a new one, because this one's almost done, I love me hard back journal. I love this because it's just, it's so, well, I'm not going to open it and show you, um, but I love hard back and I can send y'all links for these. But what I do is I put my clipboard in between here and I usually have two, which is perfect. I can't tell you how many times this clipboard has saved me. Um, and I love these guys right here. I don't know if y'all have them. Let me make sure they're on here right. I'm holding any ones. Um, I don't know where my other blue one is. I should have been more prepared. Oh, here it is right here. But it covers it. Let me make sure I don't have anything going on here. Um, but you can cover your pages. It's your pr protection. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Joanna, says, so, so you recommend having a price list for your client or is that a bad idea? I don't think it's a bad idea. I mean, so age old question. Do you advertise your prices online? Do you or don't you? Um, you know, when they call, like, like I've said before, I want them to call me because after they call me and we discuss the prices, that's not really necessary an issue anymore. But I do have my prices in here just because the National Notary Association says we have to advertise or, or we have to, don't we have to have that? Yeah, a lot of states actually require that you have posted fees. So that's not a bad idea to have. And I don't think, I think what speaks to the question is whether or not it's tacky. And a lot of notaries, um, well, it's, it's not even just notaries. It's any mm -hmm. business, especially when you're starting business. 
we have that, and Sylvie said it best, you know, we sell ourselves short. We have this insecurity about asking for payment for our service. I know, and I know, it is so hard. And we're and absolutely like, allowed to do that. We are, and you know what, guys, don't let people cheapen it. I mean, we work our butts, I work my butt off to know what I'm doing out there, you know? And, and for you to haggle with my price, would you do that to a plumber? I mean, I know you can go to a bank and get it for free or whatever. I know that, you know that. Um, but one person put it to me like this. So think about it like this, and we're almost out of time. Um, that um, if we weren't out there doing what we were doing, I, if I wasn't out there to go help Betty Sue, who's in the nursing home that can't get out and she's embarrassed and she didn't want to talk everybody to know her business, nobody's going to be able to help her. So we, it gives me goosebumps. I'm not, not crying, <laughs> but, but we are needed. And um, don't let anybody sell you short. Don't let anybody make you feel like you shouldn't charge what you're worth because you are worth every penny that you charge. And if you want to charge a hundred dollars, you are worth a hundred dollars. And I should have charged more for the job I did in downtown Dallas today. <laughs> well, I love that. I love what you're speaking. We have to know our value and then add tax. That was uh, one of the favorite quotes. Oh, I'm using that as a quote to post on social media. <laughs> you can totally take it. And the other thing is too, is you're going to hear people say, and, and the people who say it the most are notaries. I'm just a notary. There's no such thing as just a notary. Mm -mm. Yeah. We play a very critical role in, in lots of different processes, but we are very oftentimes the last line of defense for mortgage and identity fraud. This is a real business. We're taking a risk every time we, every single time I sign my name and use my stamp, I'm risking, you know, it's scary. Yep. And, and people and, need to know that value. And it's absolutely worth it. it Guys, is. I, think, uh, I think that wraps up the questions. We were supposed to go 20 to 30 minutes. I know. You know, April. <laughs> this is yeah, awesome, April. I, oh, yeah. And if y'all need help with anything, and if Bill's okay, I'll share that list with you. Now, people, there are links on there, and I might earn like a commission if you get something, but I think it's well worth it, okay? <laughs> uh, but I do. I have a ton of resources for y'all. But like this list, I'm telling you, Oh, you can't see it anymore. But like I have all the websites where you can go and you can compare other people's websites. So many things on there. Yeah, we'll, uh, we can send that out with the replay. Um, I'll give a link to the resources yeah. that April provided today and uh, so much more. April, thank you so much for your enthusiasm for the work that you do and your willingness to share that uh, with everybody here. And all, thanks for all the time that you put into this as well. This was awesome. <laughs> well, and... I, Thank you. What? Well, just real quickly, Bill. Thank you. I mean, thank you, first of all, for inviting me to chat with you. I think this is like our fourth or fifth time. I, I enjoy doing it so much. And I have so much respect for you. I just adore you and everything that you do for all of us out there in the community. I did you cry. <laughs> it's not a call till you cry, but thank you so much. I'm so glad that our paths have connected. Oh, and me too. I love your willingness to share. And guys, I love that we've had 55 people on here on a Yay. Wednesday night learning how to grow themselves and grow their business. So thank you for being here. You guys enjoy the rest of your night and we'll see you. Ask for uh, your money. You're worth it. $100. <laughs> Bye y'all. See you guys later. <laughs>